Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and as always, I am happy to be with you. I am a little extra excited to be with you today. First of all, it's Friday, which is always good, although I don't know about you, but one day blurs into the next now that we're staying at home, so it's not like my weekend's going to really be that much different from my week, but there may be a bike ride or something involved. I'm definitely hoping so because the weather is gorgeous right now. I am excited because I am inter- interviewing a, a very good friend of mine today, and I've had people on the podcast before that have been friends and acquaintances, and and I've loved every time. I'm always amazed at how many people I know who have written books. I think that's so cool. I don't know. It's like I come from an environment that appreciates books or something. Um, I'm excited about today's interview because this author, Penny Waldy, is the one that I have known the longest. So originally that record was held by Camille Greep and Juliet Cutler, both of whom I met um, the same summer when we all worked at the same Lutheran Bible camp together. But now I'm interviewing Penny Waldy, and I have known her, I don't even know how old I was. Um, she and her husband were at, her husband was the intern at the Lutheran church I attended growing up. And that was, you know, something like 8 million years ago. <laughs> I don't remember. I should know this. Was I in junior high? Was it earlier than that? At any rate, they then came back after Joel, her husband, graduated from seminary, and he was our pastor for a while. So um, he was the pastor who married my sister and brother-in-law. Penny was my high school volleyball coach. I, I come, you know, I lived in a in a very small town growing up, so there's all kinds of crossover and connection. And I babysat their kids; they have three, and just lots of connection. My parents and I used to have. I don't even know, regular, monthly maybe. Maybe they were more sporadic than that, but we would have pizza and movie nights. Penny makes really amazing homemade pizza. So we would have pizza and movie nights and we would all hang out. And it was just a lot of fun. I I definitely miss that. I haven't seen Penny since um, a friend of ours wedding six years ago, I think that was. And before that, it had been even longer. So it was really great to talk to her and to catch up a little bit and just see what's going on in her life and also to talk about her book. I'm sort of laughing this week because we're on opposite ends of the spectrum with the books. Tuesday was an adult thriller. I know where you sleep. Suspense. Today is a children's book about a sheep. Uh, kind of a mischievous sheep named Morris. The book is called Morris, Somewhere Out There, and it is by Penny and her friend Deborah O'Neill. Unfortunately, um, Deb was not able to join us for this interview. She did send in some answers to the, do the questions, though, so we were able to incorporate those into the conversation. Um, we we missed her, but we understood that she was not available to be with us at this time. Let me go ahead and give you the description of the book. It is called Morris, Somewhere Out There. Morris, the fun-loving lamb, believes life is more exciting outside the pen. He disregards the rules that Norm, the shepherd, presents to the herd that morning. Morris also ignores all the warnings from Norm, his sheep friends, and his newfound companion, Bo Peep. Finding a place where the fence post has fallen down, Morris jumps over the broken fence and escapes the safety of the pen to find what he thinks is greener grass. Morris is totally unaware of the dangers, and he ignores surroundings to satisfy his own wishes. The wolf, whose name is Flo, wolf spelled backwards, lurks around the fence line of the pen and is ready to snatch this carefree lamb. 
thankfully, the good shepherd is always guarding his sheep and is mindful of where they are at all times. Norm, the shepherd, our hero in the story, is willing to do what is needed to rescue his beloved sheep, Morris. What a glorious day it is when Morris is brought back safely to the pen and the herd. Hopefully Morris has learned a valuable lesson about listening and following rules. That is the description of Morris Somewhere Out There by Penny Waldy and Deborah O'Neill. They uh, both helped write the story and Penny did the illustrations. The illustrations are bold and bright and really fun. There's a couple things that I really loved about this book. First, it rhymes, and I'm a big fan of Dr. Seuss and Shel Silverstein. So, you know, a good rhyming book that you can read with your kiddos is always fun. Second, uh, as the, are the pictures, as I mentioned, they're 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 so much fun and so bright and eye catching. And then third is that you notice that phrase good shepherd in there and this is based on the good shepherd story of Jesus in the New Testament but you don't have to know the Bible you don't have to be a Christian to enjoy this book you can be completely secular and and still enjoy a good story about a, a sheep a character who needs to listen and learn to trust that those rules are put there for a good reason. If you are Christian, then you will recognize the story and maybe it's another way of sharing that with your own children, with Sunday school children, with vacation Bible school children, what have you. So those are the reasons that I love this book. And so let me go ahead and stop my rambling portion and get on to the interview with Penny. Hi, Penny. I am so excited to have you on the podcast. Oh, thank you. I'm so excited to be on the podcast. <laughs> so we have known each other for, well, a really long time. <laughs> more, more, yeah. I'm not, not going to count it up right now. Um, no, ma'am. And yeah. so <laughs> I'm excited that you're here and we are here to talk about your new children's book. It's called Morris, Somewhere Out There. Before we get to the book, though, uh, if you could share a little bit about yourself, that would be great. Okay. Well, um, I have a Bachelor of Science degree in Art Education and Health and Human Performance, although I've never really um, followed that in my career path. Um, and I also have a Master of Arts in Pastoral, it's called Pastoral Theological Ministry, <laughs> whatever that means. And, That's really hard to um, say. Wow. So, yeah, yeah. I guess I, I sound important, but um, anyway, so I've had a variety of jobs, um, including teaching elementary art. I taught um, special ed for a while. Taught Title One. Um, I was a road scholar director for a while through the University of Montana Western in Dillon, and now I work at a physical therapy clinic in Florence, Montana. My husband, Joel, and I um, recently moved to Florence. Um, we have three grown children. Um, two of them live close to us, which is really nice and kind of why we moved here. And then our daughter is in Minnesota with two grandchildren, a, a boy and a girl. Um, and I'm also on the side, an artist, have been an artist for many years and have worked in a variety of mediums. Um, my most popular or my most favorite is printmaking, um, but I also do watercolor, hand lettering, some pen and ink, um, and then I do handcraft my um, original cards. So, and um, we, like I say, we've, we've lived in Montana for a long time. That's how I know you, obviously, um, from our first congregation in Plains, Montana till now. So over, um, well, close to close to 30 years, um, and we love Montana, the outdoors, the and everything it has to offer. So, yes, that is me. And I, that is you, and I am I'm jealous that you are in Montana, and I am not, but that is okay. Um, <laughs> and it's it's very strange because uh, this will give some clue as to how long we've known each other. In that I used to babysit your now adult children. <laughs> Yes, yes. <laughs> um, so this book is written with a co-author, uh, Deborah O'Neill, and she unfortunately could not join us today, but she did send in some answers to questions. So um, for my for the listeners, uh, Deb 
says that she worked in public education for 30 years. She's retired, but working part-time assisting with reading and language arts. She has helped with Sunday and Vacation Bible School, and she and her daughter traveled twice with youth with a mission to the Baja Peninsula to um, work on house, excuse me on house building missions. So that's a little bit about Deb. Um, where did you and Deb meet? Aha, uh -huh. you're going to have to wait to find out the answer to that question because we have to take our first break of the podcast. But when we come back, you'll find out where Penny and Deb met and how they decided to write a book together and all of those wonderful nosy questions that I like to ask. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. You really can't underestimate the importance of having the right creative work for your brand or your product. Whether it's a logo, a website, a book cover, or an ad campaign, you really need a quality design to make that big difference pop and deliver your overall engagement and success in a competitive market. That's where Design Crowd comes in. Design Crowd has over 750,000 designers from Sydney to San Francisco ready to help you with awesome creative ideas. They make crowdsourcing work for you. So if you need a logo or you're working on your creative branding, you can go to designcrowd.com and post a brief describing the design you need. And then within about two to seven days, you'll receive up to over a hundred different designs from designers around the world. Then you pick the best design and approve payment to the designer. So you're only paying for the design that you want. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of freelancing and out of crowdsourcing. And you don't have to be a huge company like Harvard Business School to use Design Crowd, although they have used it as well. You can start a project on Design Crowd for as little as $99. And if you go right now to designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or enter the promo code health and wellness on their website, then our health and wellness listeners will receive up to $150 off of your design project. That's designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or entering that promo code health and wellness. Golden State Media Concepts bring you the Bible Study Podcast. Reflect and journey the Bible as together we study God's Word and be inspired. Bible study made fun and informative for all ages. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Bible Study Podcast. Welcome back. Before the break, I had just asked Penny where she and Deb met, and then I was very rude and interrupted. Uh, so I will now take you back to that interview so you can find out the question, the answer to the question that I asked a couple of moments ago. Well, um, my husband, Joel, was a pastor in Dillon, Montana, and that is um, actually, um, Deb was part of the interview team, and she kind of showed us around the church. That's when I first met her, but we became fast friends once we moved to Dillon, and we've been good friends ever since. So that would have been in 2001. So since 2001, I have known Deb. Okay. So let's talk about the book. Again, it's called Morris, Somewhere Out There. And uh, can you give just a brief overview of the story? So the story kind of follows the the biblical story of the lost sheep, um, although it kind of started that way, but because um, both of us in Dillon, and Dillon is a very much a ranching community, um, a couple of very large sheep ranches, so we were very familiar with sheep, and so it just kind of all fell together. So Morris is... Um, he doesn't like to pay attention. He doesn't like to follow rules. And when the shepherd directs the sheep, the flock, um, 
Morris decides that he would rather be somewhere else and, you know, the grass is always greener somewhere else. And so he gets out of the pen and runs into a dangerous situation against the wolf whose name is Flo. And just so you know, Flo comes because that is wolf spelled backwards. We've had a lot of questions that we don't spell it right. So it's wolf spelled backwards. And ah. Flo um, is, and so then the, the shepherd is worried and looks for Morris. And there is a little, um, a little bird who helps the shepherd find Morris. And the shepherd comes and leaves the other sheep and comes and finds Morris and brings him back and all is well. <laughs> so that's kind of Morris in a in a nutshell. In a nutshell. It, it's very cute yeah. and it's written in a rhyming style, so it it's fun right. to read. Uh, now, Deb says that you are the one who encouraged her to work um, on wordsmithing, a fun story for others to enjoy. That's what she wrote. Um, so is that the way you remembered it, that you <laughs> you came up with the, with the idea? Yeah, I kind of wanted to write a book. And um, so Deb and I um, had been very involved in, well, we were Sunday school super, superintendents together for um, several years. And we um, we wrote a lot of Sunday school curriculum. We um, did Sunday school Christmas programs, Bible school curriculum, all kinds of things. And of course, we could never just use other resources. We had to always recreate everything. Um, and we had tons of fun doing it. And so then when um, we we're not doing that anymore. Um, it was like there was something missing. And so I said, let's write a book. <laughs> and so we did <laughs> kind of taking <laughs> off from where we left off. So fun. Um, and what made yeah. you decide to write the, so it, it kind of dealing with the, uh, the, the sheep ranches around you and your background mm -hmm. in Sunday school and vacation Bible school, uh, why the lost shepherd story in particular? I mean, the lost sheep, the, yeah, the good shepherd. Right. Well, as we started talking about it, um, we wanted to write something that um, families and children could relate to in the sense that it kind of life skills children life skills but also you know that I think all of us deal with and the fact that um, sometimes it's hard for us to follow directions sometimes it we want to do the way we want to do it and sometimes we envy the greener grass on the other side and all that kind of thing and so we wanted a story um, and of course when we started talking about this it wasn't just one story it was we wanted um, kind of a significant character and I guess um, I was inspired by, I grew up with Charlie Brown and kind of that Charlie Brown character of, you know, the lessons always learned kind of thing. And so we wanted to have some sort of life lesson that came out of this. But we also, um, you know, because of our faith and because we, and we wanted to um, just share the love of Jesus, our good shepherd in some fun way. And in the past when we'd done like Christmas programs and everything, we we always kind of put foremost that, you know, you want to bring the story to life for children so they can understand God's amazing love for us. But at the same time, um, you know, kind of um, make it fun and make it interesting. And so we kind of recreated different I don't know how you say it, but just through, you know, obviously the the Christmas story is the same, but we recreated in all different kinds of ways, sharing the same story, but in a fun new way. Um, and so that's kind of what we wanted to do with um, this particular story. And we started, we originally started with the idea of a sheep and a shepherd um, and then just found all kinds of biblical references to Jesus, our good shepherd. And so we just started with the lost sheep story and just kind of grew from there. 
And I like that you can, um, if you're familiar with the story of the lost sheep, then you're definitely going to recognize it in this story. But also, it, it can be read from a completely secular standpoint um, and be right. enjoyed. And still, there's some good lessons to be learned. And then if, if children were to encounter the Good Shepherd story later, they'd be like, hey, I know that story. I, I read a book about that once. <laughs> yeah, and that was kind of our hope. And you know, we wanted to obviously, like I said, share um, how much God loves us and will do whatever it takes to come after us and keep us out of danger. But at the same time, um, our parents, our teachers, our caretakers, um, you know, the same kind of thing. They love us. They want to take care of us. We have boundaries. We have rules because of their love for us and um, just showing how you know, they will do what they need to do to come after us and protect us. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Morris is the the main character, the sheep who is, you know, not wanting to listen. Um, Deb writes that he portrays many characteristics of people, i.e. there's always something more interesting out there and we don't have to listen to others. I can do it myself. <laughs> um, and yeah. I think... <laughs> I think that yeah, Morris is a lot of us. I, I think he we we often have those chafing at rules, you know, those feelings of chafing at rules or wanting to do it myself. Um, what from your perspective, what do you think it is about Morris that will resonate with your readers? Um, well, I think Morris is you know he's very curious and he has that sense of adventure which a lot of us do, but also. I guess just bringing, again, like as Deb said, bringing to light the fact that he doesn't pay attention because, you know, his, he's looking somewhere else. And I guess for children, um, you know, just the importance of paying attention and, um, and understanding why there are boundaries, why there are rules, and the possible dangers that are out there. Um, but, yeah, again, like Deb said, there's something better over there. I know the grass is green or somewhere else. I got to find it, that kind of thing. So, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. What age range do you think um, would respond best to the story? What age range did you write it for? Well, we originally wrote it for, um, you know, actually for fairly young kids because um, because of the rhyming. Um, that they could, parents or teachers or caregivers could read it to them and it just has kind of a fun little gate to it, um, that kind of thing. So I would say, um, you know, once kids sit and listen to books and see the pictures, um, so even preschool age and then up till probably like third or fourth grade we were thinking, but um I do think it's kind of ageless in the sense that um, Dr. Seuss was an inspiration, I know for me, for a very long time. Um, and I mean, I still like reading his books. <laughs> and me too. Um, they are fun to read. <laughs> so I, I guess that was the hope that it's kind of an ageless kind of a book that people would enjoy just because it's fun and rhyming well and as i mentioned at the beginning i am an adult and i think rhyming books are fun so i don't know maybe i just am a child at heart we're going to go ahead and take our second break of the podcast when we come back we'll be talking about the co-author relationship and how that worked for penny and deb so stay tuned you're listening to the gsmc book review podcast and i'll be right back I want to talk to you guys about this amazing product i've been using lately called hydrant if you're like me and you want to kick the coffee habit, but you're worried about your energy levels depleting to avoid the morning sluggishness and that midday slump, you need to make sure you're hydrated. It's super important. And that's where I've been using Hydrant. And for 25% off your first order, you can go to drinkhydrant.com and enter promo code GSMC at checkout. Hydrant is basically flavored electrolyte packets you mix directly into your water to make hydrating your body easy and delicious. And what I love about Hydrant, it's backed by research. The formula was developed by Oxford scientists to provide perfectly balanced, efficient hydration. 
Again, that's drinkhydrant.com and enter promo code GSMC for 25% off your first order. Another really cool thing about Hydrant, there's no synthetic colors or artificial sweeteners. The formula is vegan and you can choose between three different flavors or a variety pack. So for all my vegan friendly fellows out there, this one's for you. Again, this is drinkhydrant.com and enter promo code GSMC. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I am speaking today with Penny Waldy with uh, a few answers here and there from her co-author, Deborah O'Neill, um, who was unfortunately unable to join us, but who did give us some answers to the questions that I asked. So let's go ahead and get back to that interview about their book, Morris, somewhere out there. Um, I'm always fascinated with uh, co-author relationships. So um, in this case, how how did that work? How did you work together? I mean, I know you did the illustrations, but you also worked with Deb on the story. Is that correct? Right, right. And she helped with the illustrations. You know, I would draw them out and such, and um, we would talk about them. But um, actually, we had tons of fun, and um, we are both extremely random people. And so to sit for anyone that has any kind of type A personality to sit in the same room with us would probably drive them crazy, but <laughs> we're just very random and we just had tons of fun and creating, um, but it always, whenever we were creating something, it was just kind of this, I don't know, all I can think of is like this big, huge ball of messed up yarn that's just going all over the place, but it always comes back to we always get the idea out there. Um, so I have to say it was just, it was, we're very fun. And it always amazed us both how things came together in our creating sessions because um, probably a creating session would be two, three hours <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> because of all the random stories <laughs> we were making. <laughs> so... But um, yeah, it worked really well, which was which was amazing. Yeah, and and Deb, Deb's answer is that uh, again, lots of laughter. She says the laughter and creativity was delightful. We shared mm-hmm. so many fun ideas, frustrations, and useful edits. Uh, other commitments interfered with getting together as often as we would have liked, but it allowed for ideas to develop. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so can you talk about the illustrations, the style of the illustrations, what kind of inspired the particular style for you? So as an artist, um, I've always wanted to illustrate, and I've always, um, you know, just kind of a, a fun side dream of mine. But um, I wanted it to be, well, like teaching special ed teaching um, children's art. I love children's art and I love um, how kids see things. And so I want it to be fairly simple and bold and colorful. Um, and I guess I, I have to say I went about it in kind of a barbaric way with our new, um, 
our technological world that we live in. Um, so every page is hand drawn, painted, um, and it took a very long time. <laughs> and my daughter, who's a graphic de designer, um, kind of laughed at me <laughs> through it. <laughs> um, she did help me with digitizing it because once I had it all drawn out, um, then it had to be digitized in a form that could be put in a book. And so, um, like I said, they, and I want, I mean, the main thing was that when you open the full page, it's mostly illustration um, because all of us, I shouldn't say all of us, but when I read a book, I like pictures. <laughs> I see things in pictures. So that was the purpose of that. And like I said, okay. very simple and bright. Mm -hmm. Yes, and and actually, uh, as you read through the the sun is on every page and doesn't yes. uh, isn't isn't part of the story but reacts to every part of the story. So that's really fun. <laughs> that was yeah, and that was kind of the other idea that each character, um, you know, had their own little personality and um, and that's been fun to hear different um, teachers who've read the book to children or different kids who've read it and how they get so excited about the sun um, and, and his, his or her reaction to it um, mm -hmm. on each page. So, yeah. Yeah. So I'm glad I, you noticed I that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> do you think that you and Deb will write more books together? Well, we kind of hope so. Um, my move to Florence hasn't really helped that much, but, um, you know, we talked about, and it was another kind of random thing. So where I used to walk when we were in Dillon, um, we would walk by this small sheep ranch. And one day all the sheep were all huddled up laying down and there was this llama head poked out of the middle of all these sheep. And instantly I thought, oh, book two. <laughs> so that's kind, of, that's kind of the hope is that um, we can kind of attack the not attack that's not a very nice word we could kind of um touch on the idea of you know being afraid of the dark and kids being afraid of the dark and again our good shepherd is with us but um kind of the idea that norm takes a night off and the llama is in charge anyway just a silly little idea but i love we'll it where that llamas goes. are very popular right now so yeah 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 and i bet and, a llama would be fun to draw yes and they're um, kind of quirky looking, so you yes. would fit right in. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. And um, I will just say from my own personal perspective, I love this book and, you know, the idea of other books because often if you're working in a Sunday school or church setting, you know, sometimes you just want a good, sweet simple book to read with kids about a specific mm -hmm. topic and it, it's sometimes hard to find those books that aren't like well that, that are good <laughs> there's there's yeah. sometimes books out there that you're like yeah this is not really what I want to talk about so um yeah. I will be selfish and say please write more books because that would be awesome for Sunday school teachers yeah to have at their disposal <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah and one thing uh, I like I had said earlier too is the you know, just putting a different twist on some of these stories that are told over and over again, just a little bit of a different fun twist, um, just to kind of get kids thinking. So, Yep, I agree. Uh, I, I always ask about favorite authors and genres because I'm nosy and I like to know what people read. <laughs> um, so yeah. Deb wrote Patricia Polacco. Uh, I don't know if I pronounced that last name right, but Dr. Seuss and Tommy mm -hmm. DePaola, who are children's authors. Mm -hmm. And I'm so sad that Tommy DePaola just died uh, uh, in the last couple of weeks. But um, some of my favorites as well. You, you can tell me your favorite children's authors or your favorite authors to read as an adult, whichever whichever you would like to do. Yeah, so... Um... I, unfortunately, growing up, I was never a very good reader, and so I kind of stayed away from reading, and then I went to seminary and had to read all these heady theology books, and I just, I don't know, it just kind of turned me off to reading, but then I started 
once I had my own children, I started teaching and working with children. Again, Dr. Seuss was a big inspiration for me um, and different children's authors. And then um, I've now started reading Francine Rivers, who I really like. I love love and romance and mystery. And um, I read several John Grisham books too, um, just because I love the mystery and who done it and that kind of stuff too. So kind of all over the board with <laughs> authors, but I would say okay. probably Dr. Scoots has been a, a big inspiration for me because of his fun, quirky stories, but they all have deeper meaning. And that's kind of, that was kind of what we wanted to bring out in Morris. Yeah. And he had such a good way with cadence and rhyme. Um, yeah. That, yeah. They're just, they're fun. They're fun to read. Uh, do you have advice for someone who might want to write a children's book? Well, um, hmm, I guess just because this was so random and so, you know, we, we just kind of started from the bottom and worked our way through it, trying to figure out the best way to do it and how to do it. Um, so I know as we... Um, as we finished it, we worked through, um, we did self-publishing through um, Book Baby. And um, so they had different suggestions and we did talk to um, kind of a marketing person. And I guess the advice I would have and something I'm not very good at and we've not been very good at is um, getting it out there and marketing it. Um, so, you know, I think there's, a lot of great ideas out there and a lot of people who have wonderful stories to tell and but the biggest hurdle for us was um like i said getting it out there and putting the time and commitment into marketing through book events um and online presence social media presence all those things um which we have not mastered and so i appreciate i guess you reaching out to me and being able to talk about it because um that part is kind of discouraging. So, um, and I don't know, like I said, it's not really much advice, but I guess the advice is to have fun doing it and to share your stories and be willing to share your stories and um, seek out the help that you need. And that's just kind of the path we had to take um, because like I said, we've never done this before and it was all, all new. And we were kind of mm -hmm. groping in the dark, <laughs> trying to figure out how to do it. So, I do also have a bit of advice from Deb. But once again, you're going to have to wait until after our final break of the podcast to find out what that is. Stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. You really can't underestimate the importance of having the right creative work for your brand or your product. Whether it's a logo, a website, a book cover, or an ad campaign, you really need a quality design to make that big difference pop and deliver your overall engagement and success in a competitive market. That's where Design Crowd comes in. Design Crowd has over 750,000 designers from Sydney to San Francisco ready to help you with awesome creative ideas. They make crowdsourcing work for you. So if you need a logo or you're working on your creative branding, you can go to designcrowd.com and post a brief describing the design you need. And then within about two to seven days, you'll receive up to over a hundred different designs from designers around the world. Then you pick the best design and approve payment to the designer. So you're only paying for the design that you want. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of freelancing, and out of crowdsourcing. And you don't have to be a huge company like Harvard Business School to use Design Crowd, although they have used it as well. You can start a project on Design Crowd for as little as $99. And if you go right now to designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or enter the promo code health and wellness on their website, then our health and wellness listeners will receive up to $150 off of your design project. That's designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or entering that promo code health and wellness. Still on the search of that one true love? 
on the limbo in this crazy world of dating, marriage, relationships. Well, listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Relationship Podcast, your one-stop podcast for everything about relationships. GSMC Book Review Podcast. Before the break, Penny was sharing her advice for aspiring authors, especially aspiring children's books uh, book authors. And now we are going to get Deb's answer to that same question. Yeah, and and Deb Deb's advice is very very concise. Be patient and laugh often. She says. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. Those are good yeah. things to remember as well. You know, don't get so caught yes. up in in everything that you 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 aren't having fun with it. Right. Right. Um, so since you are both kind of new to this, I, I don't believe you have an author website or anything like that. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. The okay. book is on Amazon. No. And that's about the extent of our online presence. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which, okay. like uh, I said, it's... Um... Go ahead. Okay. No, I just the, the, I was looking to see if um, I, I know Deb said that the bookstore in Dillon does have a few copies, but basically Amazon is your best source to get the book. Right. Yeah, yeah. and I've put it out there on Facebook a few times and um, Instagram, you know, but I'm I have a limited following, so it doesn't. Mm-hmm. I mean, actually, I've got a few sales off of it, but not much. So. Yeah. Well, hopefully we will get some people who would like to, to, to purchase it. You should get it, people. It's cute. Yeah. It's very fun. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so we've talked about a variety of things. Um, is, is there anything else that you would like for people to know about the book or writing or illustrating? Anything that we haven't talked about? Um, I guess just to kind of put an exclamation mark by what Deb had said, and I guess I've kind of said too, is that um, just have fun and laugh through it and be patient and um, I guess enjoy the stories that you have and share them with people. Mm -hmm. And yes, to... to Piggyback off of that, Deb, Deb wrote, uh, holding a book and turning the pages can be so mindful of new ideas, places, feelings, and adventures. And she says, book comfort readers. Yeah. Which I, I liked because that's definitely true. Yes. Yeah. So, Penny, thank you so much for joining me. I loved chatting with you. Um, and just thank you for taking the time out of your weekend to talk to me. Well, thank you for this opportunity. So thank you once again to Penny for joining me and to Deb for taking time to write out her answers. I really appreciated that she was able to be part of the interview in at least some small way. And hopefully they will write another book together and she will be able to join us for another interview if there ever is one. I think that would be a lot of fun. Actually, that's something that I've wanted to do anyways, have co-authors on and talk to them. I haven't done an interview with more than one person, uh, more than one author. So that could be fun and something new for me and you. And I don't know. I don't know why I said, and me and you, me, the host, you, the listeners. Thank you to Penny. (laughs) Thank you as always to you, my listeners. I so appreciate you. If you are interested in this book, you should definitely go to Amazon and check it out and see if this is something that you would like to read with your own kids or in um, a Sunday school context or VBS context, if we can have either of those things anytime soon coming up. Thank you as always for joining me. Please join me again on Tuesday when I'll be talking with uh, Annette Valentine about the book that she, the novel that she wrote based on her father's life story. So that will be Tuesday. 
In the meantime, if you are a fan of this podcast, please do follow us on social media, GSMC Book Review, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Please also give us um, a nice review, whether written or five star. They are greatly appreciated and help us to get this podcast out to more and more readers just like you, which would be wonderful. I love connecting with readers and um, would like to connect with more. If you have comments or questions about the interviews or the books, please do feel free to hit me up on social media. Again, Instagram, uh, Facebook, and Twitter, GSMC Book Review. Hope you're having a great start to your weekend since it is Friday evening, and I hope you have a wonderful weekend, whether you're staying home or whether you're able to get out and take a properly socially distanced walk or whether you are one of those essential employees who still needs to go out to you i say thank you as always thank you thank you thank you everyone from doctors to hospital staff to janitors to grocery store workers to delivery drivers and everyone in between thank you so much for uh, making it possible for the rest of us to, to stay home and stay safe and flatten that curve hope you have a great weekend as i said and please join me again on tuesday in the meantime Take lots and lots of your weekend time to get yourself lost in a good book. Thanks. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from Move to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.